Welcome PCS students, families, teachers, administrators, and guests to this Level Up Visual Arts Visual uh, Virtual Enrichment event with the James Museum of Western and Wildlife Art. I am Jonathan Ogle, Pre-K-12 Visual Arts Specialist for Pinellas County Schools, and I'm really happy that you're with us to learn some very cool things at this Level Up Virtual Art event. Our school district's innovative Level Up program offers quality virtual enrichment opportunities throughout the school year that allows students and families to make the most of their PCS Connects digital learning devices. It also helps students connect to learning beyond the school day in the classrooms. I'm very excited that the Visual Arts Department was able to partner up with the James Museum on this, this special Level Up event tonight. The James Museum recently was awarded the Pinellas Art Education Association's Community Art Partner Award. And tonight, they will be sharing with us the important role that museums play in exhibiting artwork. And then they'll be focusing in on a historic and very cool art style called pop art with several art making websites that you can visit. And then they will be spotlighting a very famous Native American artist. His name is Stan Natchez, and he's a pop artist who has artwork in a number of prestigious galleries and museums throughout the United States, including the James Museum in St. Petersburg, Florida. Hopefully you've been to the James Museum by now, and if not, you can visit during the regular business hours with your family, or perhaps on a school-provided student field trip. This evening, we have the art experts with us, our two guest presenters who are live at the James Museum right now are Molly Wilford, who's the manager of Group Experiences, and Stacy Scottsdale, manager of Youth and Family Programs. Welcome, Molly and Stacy. I'm sure the students and families are really eager to get started and find out all the great things you have to share with us. Thank you, Mr. Ogle. I'm Molly Wolfert. And I'm Stacy Stockdale. Thanks for joining us this evening. We want to welcome you into our museum with a short clip that highlights the architecture of our beautiful spaces here at the James. We are in the James Museum, where it's $10 Tuesday. The galleries are open, and you may see and hear people wandering around during our presentation this evening. The absolute best way to see a museum is in person, but we know that that's not always possible. So tonight, we are going to show you how art museums use their websites to bring artwork and art making to younger people. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, is this the Native Artist Gallery? Oh, yes, yes, yes it I'm is. I'm looking for a painting by Neo Pop Artist Stan Natchez. Actually, it's right behind us here. Oh, cool. Wait, who are yeah. What's all this? Well, well, funny you should ask. We're, we're actually talking with Pinellas County students uh, right now. And in a minute, we're going to share with them how they can use museum websites to find out about cool art stuff like pop art, artist Stan Natchez, and how to make pop art themselves. So I can go on the James Museum website and I can look up more about Stan Notches? Yes, and also how to make art inspired by his work. Oh, thank you. Cool. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah. We are a very popular venue. <laughs> you never know who's going to pop in. <laughs> <laughs> Most museums have a web presence. Um, on their websites, you can find out how to visit them and how much it costs, stuff like that. But some museums, like the James, offer online content created especially for kids, just like you. So let's get started.
When you use a search engine like Google, keep it simple. Use words that mean something to you and always be sure to keep an adult nearby. You never know when one might come in handy. So tonight is about pop art. And you heard the name Stan Natchez earlier and that he's a pop artist. So what is pop art? Here's a short clip from the Tate Museum in London to learn more. wanted plastic and glamour. They wanted to have a good time. Buy more, spend more. Don't just watch TV, be on TV. Now you can listen to the Beatles and Elvis, watch cartoons, eat popcorn, drive cars and become famous. Now it was pop art all about culture. After all, pop art means popular art, art for all. But who were the pop artists? Richard Hamilton, this guy, said pop art was low cost, young, witty, glamorous and mass produced. Hamilton made collages using imagery he found in glossy magazines. Lifting images from films and advertising was completely bonkers at the time. This is one of the famous Marilyn portraits by Andy Warhol. Andy, Andy Warhol, this guy. A cool guy. For Andy, art was a product. The same as a production line of Coca Cola bottles or Camel Tea. So, we learned a little bit about what pop art is. And we wanted to start out this evening by taking a poll. We know that you like to take polls here on Nearpod and museum websites curate a lot of information. Uh, but the trick is to find the stuff that is for kids. So we wanted to use this poll to find out what are you the most interested in finding on museum websites? And we have three choices here. So the first one is online exhibitions, uh, which are kind of like pop art is found with one click and it's an exhibition is a group of art with a common theme or idea and museums use exhibitions to group similar kinds of art together. The second one is artists or an artist's work like you could find all of Stan Natchez's work in one click. And then the final one is art making games and puzzles and you can find those on muse museum websites uh, with a couple more clicks and museums can be a really fun place uh, to learn and explore so if you're live right now on the nearpod uh, we'd like you to click in your answer and share with us what you're interested in learning more about websites on museum websites So we see most people, the one likes art making games and puzzles. Okay. We so. also have in the chat, uh, Emma who put B. Ah, B. Okay. Art. Very nice. Very nice. You so can put your answer in the chat too. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Yeah, so we thought that the most popular answer would be art making games and puzzles. 
And so we like those too, uh, but we're going to show you all three of these contents first and save the most popular uh, for last. So let's start with letter choice A, which is online exhibitions where pop art is found. So as you can see here, there are many museums with pop art exhibitions um, like the Met that's shown on this list. The Met is actually hosting a student art show that you can check out later by clicking on this link. Uh, Stacy, that reminds me, uh, PCS students are actually uh, having a show here at the James Museum next spring, so uh, you should ask your art teacher about that. Definitely. <laughs> We also suggest the Albany Museum and the Tate Museum for a further look at pop art exhibitions. The Smithsonian has a very cool link to an exhibition with pop art, so let's take a look at that real quick. So remember how our friend Ellie from the Tate told us that comics were from the original pop art scene? and drawing comics just stuck, and over time have become a very popular way of making art. So this website shows you a lot about comics and superheroes. Very cool. Now let's pop over to a section of the James Museum website called Behind the Scenes. Don't, Don't tell. tell. A piece of Stan Natchez's art arrived at the museum here at the museum last week. Our collections manager took care of it for us when it had arrived. We filmed this video clip in the vault a few days ago. Museum has museums have vaults where they store art that is resting and not on display. And it was very cool for me to film in this space because I have not only I have not visited this part of the museum uh, only about twice since I first started, so it was very cool for me to be able to join our collections manager and film this. So let's take a look. Hi, my name is Jason Wyatt. I'm the collections manager here at the James Museum. Part of my job responsibilities is to accept art when it comes in the door for multiple purposes, whether it be an exhibition or like this piece from Stan Natchez. Uh, you guys will be looking at it later on, so I need to unpack it and make sure it's stored securely until it's time comes for you guys to look at it. So at this point, because the canvas is now open, I'm going to use some nitro gloves so that my hands don't come in contact with the surface of the painting. Because again, the oils, anything that you might have touched on the surface of your hands could also leave marks on the canvas. If you're using hand creams or anything, it'll leave marks on the surface along with just your natural body oils. So the best thing to do is to wear these nitro gloves. And so now we have the painting unwrapped. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to find a nice secure place to hang this until it's ready to be used. Um, we're going to be putting it on one of our rolling painting racks, and I will show you that next. So we've arrived at our compact storage painting racks. So what I'm going to do is hang it on one of these racks. They roll out like so. And what I'm going to do is use these two little S hooks. I'm going to attach them to the back of the canvas that has what we call D rings that helps us hang them on the wall. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to use the D rings and the S hooks to hang them on the painting rack. So 
so this is where we store all the paintings that aren't on display out in the galleries or that are not being used for purposes such as educational purposes. Um, and this keeps them safe. It keeps them, once the lights are out, it keeps them in a dark environment so the light won't affect them at all. And once we're ready to hang them up, we'll remove them out of here and we'll put them out in the galleries. Um, the final thing before I finish up, when I get back to my desk, I'll update its location on our database because our database has records of every painting that the James Museum owns. And this is actually one of the paintings. So I'll be updating the location to say that it's on uh, rack 25 and it's on the left-hand side of the rack. Thank you. Very cool look into the special place of the museum, the vault, and thank you, Jason, for that. So now we're going to take a look at the painting that Jason just showed us in the vault. Um, I want to mention that the audio for uh, the parts of Stan Nat just talking are a little softer than we would have liked, so you might want to just pay attention and maybe bump the audio up when you're listening to these clips. So let's take a look at the painting first. Stan Natchez shared with us that in this piece, he included things that reflect his culture. So if you look closely um, in the foreground, you can see a man, a woman. Um, you can also see a horse and as well as a teepee. In the background, you see stock certificates, which represent the savings of his parents. So it's very personal to him. Now let's listen to what Stan Natchez says about the beating in this work. Curious, are those beads thread on the canvas or? They're going right through the stuff. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Cool. If you look up close, you can see all the thread. So now let's listen to what Mr. Natchez has to say about his painting here that you see titled Campbell's Soup. Do you see why Mr. Natchez is called a neo-pop artist? Let's take a look. I'm looking here at your Campbell soup cans uh, painting and the one with the American flag with the soup cans in the background. Um, would you say that Warhol was and still is a big inspiration for you today? Well, not only for help, but Jesper Johns and Rush Bird. Um, there was a whole school of them, but actually, definitely for all of them had some impacts. But the Campbell Soup is not really just a reference to Warhol, but the Campbell Soup was referenced to my own life. As a kid growing up, if I was sick, my mom would give me Campbell Soup. And um, that was like, uh, that's, with all kids in this country that grew up, they were sick in elementary school. Generally, their parents, mom and dad, gave them chicken noodle soup or chicken and rice soup. So what I'm saying with that painting is that there's more similarities and differences between natives and non-natives. Yeah. And um, were those actually hand-painted, the, the soup cans, or how, how did you lay that background? I, I can't tell you. <laughs> 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 it's okay. I just find it very interesting um, and something that I really enjoy about your work is is those backgrounds um, and how you layer the canvas. Um, and um, I just didn't know if you could speak to, to that process a little bit more. Well, but like I said, if you want the viewer to walk up to your painting, you want them to be puzzled. How did this person paint this? If they can walk up there and say, oh, that's a red dot, I can do that. <laughs> Maybe they can but I think that you want to have the viewer um, so interested and maybe even puzzling curious all at the same time. So we just heard from artist Dan Natchez and there are other museums that feature artists and their work as well. So let's move on to part B of our presentation. 
the Broad, the Andy Warhol Museum, and the MoMA, or Museum of Modern Art, feature work by well-known artists such as Andy Warhol, and you can try these later. Uh, but for now, we want to just share with you from the Fritz Museum, the work of a new pop artist named X Payne. And this video clip is from 2019 and is the opening of his first exhibition in a museum. So let's take a look. Uh, well, the name of this piece is Adaptation, and it's basically this Mickey Mouse character who is going on this journey, he's falling out of his world into another world, and is just going on this journey to learn how to be brave enough to kind of deal with the problems that are kind of going on that he's dealing with that are in this world, and they seem to be kind of made of money, and so there's all there's this dragon, money dragon that he's fighting, so it's basically kind of like a movie and a painting. Very cool. So now we want to take you to the James Museum website. On our website, we have a link that takes you to an area on the website called Meet an Artist, where you can find a nice variety of interviews and fun things that we've done with artists in the past. So we are going to take a look more at Mr. Stan Natchez. He is a Shoshone Tatavian artist that's represented here at the James Museum, most known for his paint, his multimedia painting. So thank you so much for being here. Welcome. How would you describe um, your art style to children? I, it, would, it would probably be um, pop art. Pop art is like Andy Warhol and Jasper Johns and Rauschenberg. But I, I would probably consider it more neo pop art, which means it's a new, um, it's pop art of our time. So things that reflect our time are like the newspapers and maps and the yellow pages. So these are all papers that are used as backgrounds in, in some of the paintings. Um, but for me, like who uses a map anymore? We Google it. Who uses the yellow pages? I'm not even sure why they print that book. <laughs> <laughs> the comic strips, I use comic strips. and. The newspapers obsolete. All this, all this paper I'm using as backgrounds is um, going away. We're living history. Could you tell us a little bit more about the color palette that you use? We know that children here at the James are very drawn to your work, um, and the colors really bounce off of the canvas. So, could you tell us a little bit more about why you choose the colors that you do? Well, when I was teaching art history, you kind of traveled through time, and there was a movement an art history called the Fav, the Favis, and they were the wild beast of color. That's what they called them. And they were from France, these painters, these impressionist painters. And I like their palette. I like the freedom um, without any limits, without having to uh, tone down colors because maybe the color is too bright. So when you go to the art school, they teach you how to manipulate color for tonality. But for me, I just paint it. I, I just, um, if I wanted to mix color, I would. And if I did want to mix color, I would. So um, to me, there's no rules. Yeah. Um, all there is is to paint. And would you say, uh, Mr. Natchez, that your work has always been driven um, from your culture? Yes. Yeah. Early on, even if it was abstract. I think that people forget us as natives. We're, we're modern men as well. You know, but we're bad eaters, we don't exercise enough, uh, you know, maybe we watch uh, too much TV. But um, for us, that that modern world um, kind of collided with the traditional world. So that's what I'm kind of, I'm kind of painting that collision. And it's not negative or positive. Maybe it's both. Um, because when one culture occupies another culture, there's a great cross-cultural influence. But there's definitely been a cross-cultural influence. I mean, I'm speaking English right here to you. Yeah. This day, you know, 
speaking um, English. Yes. I live in a house, and we have um, uh, television. (laughs) 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 Yeah. And um, so what type of subject matters are you painting then today? What are you interested in today? You know, I'm painting, um, I'm doing a lot, uh, I'm working more towards cubism. I'm doing a lot of cubist stuff. And um, maybe, oh, let, let me see if I can bring one into the board room. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, I can definitely see the cubism influence here. Wow. That's beautiful. That, yeah. Yeah. I love amazing. that. Yeah. So what what's going on in this piece? It's called from Wernicke to Indonesia. Both villages were perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And this is a sketch for a painting that's at the Boston Fine Arts Museum. The final was seven feet by fourteen feet. Wow. Okay. It's at the MFA. Yes. Wow. And so this was inspired by the Guernica painting. Yeah. By Picasso. Okay. Your work then changed over time. So you've uh, started off with the more pop influence, and now you're moving towards more cubism. You would say, or cubism and some expressionism. Mm-hmm. Stuff more painterly. Um, thick paint, um, impostos, but I think um, my work has evolved to um, kind of in full cycle. So some of the early stuff that I did even in college when I used um, a dictionary for a background, um, I had this chunk of information. So now, like, you know, um, at the stage of the game that I'm at, I could, I have this huge chunk of information that I can dig down deep and have so many different techniques and um, ideas that I, I blend them all together today with the old and the new. Do you have any advice for young artists today? What would you say to them? You know what? Buy as many supplies as you can and just paint and draw and draw and draw. Take a sketchbook with you and draw every day. You're drawing every day if you can. Draw the people around you. It's important for me to share with the students out there that um, we have changed. Native people have changed under the rule of modern times. We have changed, but we have continued to exist. We have continued to exist to um, to a point of rebirth. We're healthier today. We're conscious. We're alive and well. I think um, our native languages are coming back. Our songs, our dances. <coughs> I think it's good for me to share with you is that uh, Native people in this country are healthy today. I have survived a a tough winter, but we have no bitterness with what's happened in history um, because bitterness and hate is a disease, and after a while, you don't know what you hate. So, my blessings to all of you. That was uh, Mr. Stan Natchez. And we didn't want to leave this portion of the presentation without sharing a link to another upcoming Native American artist. Her name is Wendy Red Star. And if you use keywords to search on the internet, such as museum, Native American artists, current pop female, or Absaloka, you will find her. And you wanted to share a link to a gallery guide from Mass MoCA, which is the Museum of Contemporary Art, and it showcases a few of her pieces and more about her and the exhibition that they had. She does amazing work. And 
we thought you would also be interested to know that Wendy Red Star's daughter, Beatrice, spent last summer working alongside her mother in an arts institute. So let's take a quick look at that. Well, I'm really excited to be here as an artist in residence at the Denver Art Museum. I've known that uh, the museum has a great collection of crow uh, material objects. And so I'm most excited to be studying those objects and kind of doing uh, like a, a deep sort of research based um, practice while I'm here and just really kind of taking my time um, figuring out where I want to go with the research that I gather. Another aspect of my practice is working with my daughter Beatrice and it's really wonderful that she can come here to the museum and she's also a working artist doing her thing and we're, we're collaborating together. And we're really interested in the uh, Crow women's objects um, mainly because I, I as a mother want to pass things down to Beatrice and I want to learn as much about how the women made a lot of the material um, objects. <laughs> Wendy Redstar is a mixed media artist who uses cultural objects as layers in her work, which is pretty neat. And um, that layering effect is, is similar to pop artist Andy Warhol and also Stan Natchez, who you met earlier. So we're moving on to part three and we save the best for last. So museums with art making, games and puzzles. And there are plenty of places uh, to play games and make art on the internet. Um, our favorite are sponsored by museums and here are a few places to visit. The first is that the Guggenheim Museum collaborates with Google Arts and Culture frequently. There are so many fun things to do with art and here are a few. Or you can go back to the Tate Museum and take a quiz on which pop artist you are. I think I'm going to take this quiz later. <laughs> and another Tate one where you can make pop art like Rain Andy Warhol. So much fun. And now we're gonna head back to the James Museum website. And I wanted to share with you a number of art making videos that we have on our website. And here's just one of them. And it's called Get Messy at Home with Pop Art. Hello everyone. Today we are going to be making a pop art mixed media collage inspired by artist Stan Natchez. His piece titled Mom and Dad Going to Town is part of the collection here at the James Museum. So let's get started. You will need a solid color piece of paper or canvas board like I have here. Similar to Stan Natchez, I'm going to cover the background using newspaper, but you may use any paper of your choice. This could be something like magazines, maps, or newspaper like I did. I've chosen a favorite childhood memory to create my own pop art collage. Growing up, I spent many, many summers fishing at my family cottage. My dad would lay the fish on newspaper before he would fillet them, which is also why I chose newspaper for my background. Now that I've laid my background, I'm going to cut out my image. I chose a fish for mine and cut it from green cardstock paper. I also chose the color green for my fish because my cottage was on Green Lake. Go ahead and glue your image to your background using a glue stick or school glue.
Now you are ready to add some color. I've chosen to use Sharpie markers and oil pastels for mine, but you can use any drawing materials you'd like. This gives bright, bold layers of color that remind me of the pop art style of Stan Natchez. When layering colors on top of print like newspaper, your piece really comes alive and begins to pop off the page. Remember that pop art was meant to catch someone's attention, very similar to advertisements or billboards. So add that fun color palette to your piece and make it your own. And lastly, I added a few details in the background, including the mouth bubbles and the water waves for my fish. So feel free to do the same details for yours. Thanks for joining me today and have fun creating your own pop art masterpiece. Wow, that was really fun. Wouldn't you like to try that? Well, it's your lucky day. Next, we're going to do a fun creative activity here on Nearpod. It is called Draw It and you have two minutes where you can make your own pop art collage using the background we've given you. If you want to post your drawing, we would love to see them. So please submit them. Ready, set, go. go. <laughs> Don't be shy. Go ahead and, and make your drawing. You can choose whatever you want to draw. Be creative. Seems and like, have some fun too. Seems like there's a good shark there in progress. I, I see it. Go. There's some big teeth. Okay, so you have a minute left. <laughs> There we go. Awesome. I like the bubbles, kind of like yours. Yeah, looks good. I like it. I love the yellow. The yellow is a good color. All right. So much fun. Almost finished. Got about 10 seconds left. Awesome job, everybody. Great job. Uh, so here we are 
back at our painting by Stan Natchez, and it's called Red Cloud, Four Powers of the World. And when I interviewed Mr. Natchez, he explained to us that this painting is about Red Cloud, a Native American hero, and a representation of the four powers of the world. Mr. Natchez explained that Red Cloud was a visionary who, like other elders of his time, could see what was coming for his people. Should they fight or should they move to reservations? It was a very difficult time with tough decisions to make on behalf of the people. Red Cloud always looked for ways to negotiate for a better ending for his people. And remembered that Mr. Natchez told us that Native Americans did survive and live in the country today. And we like to close this evening with sharing that you heard a lot, our whole presentation featured pop artists and like Stan Natchez, but we also currently have on view a special exhibition. Remember, our exhibition is a collection of works put together by Andy Warhol called Warhol's Wests, and this is on view now until January 9th of next year. So we would, you know, encourage you to come and see it and you can also uh, do some drop in screen printing and make your own tidbits which we kind of have listed here. So I'd like to show you quickly um, this web page where again like before we showed that you can find out more information about the special exhibition. And then this page also that you saw a link to down below tells you a little bit more about the drop in screen printing and the dates and the times and when you can come in. So we highly encourage you to do that. It's a very fun, messy process like we like here at the <laughs> at the James Museum. Oh, yeah. And then this concludes our presentation and we'd like yeah. to thank you all for joining us and thank you uh, to Pinellas County Schools for having us uh, here tonight. So yeah. thank you so much. We can't wait to see you guys soon. All right, uh, I want to thank uh, the James Museum and Stacy and, and Molly and our guest, our special pop artist, uh, Stan Natchez. Um, wow, this is really fantastic, wasn't it, students? Um, let's let's give them a round of applause and say thank you. Oh. Your mics are off, but I think I heard some of you anyway. Oh, there we go. We can use the uh, reactions there. That's a good idea. Let me uh, click my reaction. There we go. There's some applause. Love it. All right. Um, so we, you can see on the slide here, we've got the Nearpod code that you can write down, or you can, um, you can actually go to the Nearpod if your parents or your guardians are allowing you to do so. Um, and then you can do this at your own leisure, your own pace. There are the res resources, the online resources that uh, Stacy and Molly shared with you that um, some really exciting things to, to go do. And remember to have your uh, parent or guardian nearby when you're viewing websites on your device. So uh, this is a wrap. I just want to say thank you all um, for joining us for this special uh, Level Up Visual Arts Virtual Enrichment Event with the James Museum. Um, if you're interested in any other Level Up Virtual Learning Opportunities, there are others. You can go to the website listed below there, uh, pcsb.org Level Up, and you can see what else is going to be happening. Um, on behalf of the James Museum, Stacy and Molly and Julie, Julie Levesque was with us as well, and Marcia Quinn. Um, thank you, students, families for coming, and I'm going to go home and make some pop art. I don't know about you guys. So I'm inspired, so uh, have awesome. a great night. Keep making art. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Have a great night.